session we are going to discuss about oral habits now let's see what is habit habit may be a voluntary or involuntary act performed by a person repeatedly or compulsively it produces a harmful effects on development of maxillofacial complex and produces an unbalanced pressure on the immature and highly malleable alveolar ridges thereby causing potential changes in the position of the teeth and occlusion all these habits are normal or considered as normal during the preschool age that is beyond, uh, up to 3 to 4 years age however oral habits persist beyond this preschool age have been implicated as an important physiological factor associated with the development of malocclusion so early diagnosis and proper treatment planning of these habits will reduce the occurrence of malocclusion now let's see the definition of oral habit according to boucher habit is a tendency towards an act or an act that has become a repeated performance relatively fixed consistent easy to perform and almost automatic now let's see what are the factors that make a habit formation first one the frequency that is how often the habit is performed and intensity how vigorously it is practiced then coming to the duration that is the total number of years or months or week since the habit is being performed now let's see the classification of habits according to james a habit can be classified as useful and harmful habit according to him habit may be compulsory or compulsory a habit may be meaningful or an intentional habit habit may be a habit special habit by him now let's see in detail about some something happen So as I told earlier, most of the children below three years have their thumb or finger. It's a common uh, finding seen in newborn, and it, may, it is meant to meet both physiological and nutritional needs. And it's a spontaneous activity that develops soon after birth. Most of the children discontinue the habit by the age of three to four years. If the habit continues beyond this period, then there are definite chances. that it may lead to dentofacial changes and the severity depending on the frequency duration and intensity of the habit now coming to the definition for thumb sucking habit gillian defined digital sucking as the placement of thumb or one or more fingers in varying depth into the mouth according to moyers is the repeated forceful sucking of the thumb with associated strong buccal and lip contractions Now let's see the classification. Sucking habit can be classified as nutritive sucking habit, under which breastfeeding and bottle feeding. Then non-nutritive sucking habit, thumb sucking, finger sucking, specified toy or blanket, etc. Then according to Sutherland, thumb sucking is classified into different groups. First group, there is group one. Uh, in this uh, group. thumb is inserted beyond the first joint pressing against the parietal mucosa and alveolar tissue at the same time uh, lower incisors press uh, against the thumb then group 2 the so thumb extends up to the first joint or just anterior tip no mm, parietal contact and there is contact present with only with the anterior tip in group 3 thumb is placed fully into the mouth in contact with the palate as in group 1 but the lower incisors do not contact the thumb there is only palatal contact is present then group 4 the thumb does not progress appreciably into the mouth as the lower incisors contact the thumb at the nails this is the classification given by subtle now let's see what are the theories explaining thumb sucking Based on the classical Freudian theory by Sigmund Freud, according to this theory, a human uh, possesses a biologic sucking drive, 
and infant associates sucking with pleasurable feelings such as hunger, satiety, and being held. These events will be replaced in later life by transferring the sucking action to the most suitable object available, namely the thumb or fingers. The oral drive theory by Sears and Lewis. According to this theory, the strength of the oral drive is in part a function of how long a child continues to feed by sucking. It is not the frustration of weaning that produces thumb sucking, but in fact, it is the prolonged nursing that causes it. Then the rooting reflex by Benjamin. The rooting reflex is the movement of the infant's head and thumb towards an object touching it. Cheeks. This is a normal reflex find uh, usually seen in newborns. He suggested that thumb sucking arises from the rooting and placing reflexes common to all mammalian infants during the first three months of life. Then, according to Davidson, uh, this theory advocates that non-nutritive sucking stems from an adaptive response. Infant associates sucking with feelings like pleasure and hunger and recalls these events by sucking the suitable objects available, which is mainly thumb or finger. Then let's see the what are the etiological factors for thumb sucking. First one, the socio-economic status. In high socio-economic status, the mother is in a better position to feed the baby and in a short time the baby's hunger is satisfied, whereas in low socio-economic group, mother is unable to provide sufficient breast milk to the infant. So, in the process, infant suckles intensively for a long time, thereby exhausting the sucking urge. So, uh, this theory explains the increased incidence of thumb sucking is present in industrialized areas when compared to rural areas. So, thumb sucking is common in high socio-economic group. Then, if the working mother, if the parent uh, mother is working, then the children are brought up in the hands of caretaker and they develop a feeling of insecurity. In order to overcome that insecurity, the child starts thumb sucking and slowly it becomes a habit. Then, number of siblings. The development of habit can be related to the number of siblings because more the number increases, the attention met, met by the parents to the child gets divided. A child who feels neglected by the parent may attempt to compensate his feelings of insecurity by means of this habit. In order of birth of the child, later the sibling ranks in the family, greater is the chance of having an oral habit. But the smaller, uh, youngest children uh, have greatest tendency for developing at the habit. Then social adjustment and stress. Digit sucking has also been proposed as an emotionally based behavior related to difficulty with social adjustment or with stress. Then feeding practices. Thumb sucking is seen to be more frequent among breastfed children. age of the child. In the neonate, insecurities are related to primitive demands as hunger during first few weeks of life related to feeding problems and uh, during eruption of primary molars, it, it is uh, considered as a teething device and still later use the habit for the release of emotional tensions or taking refuge in regressing to an infantile behavior pattern. Then coming now coming to diagnosis of digital habits. First one history. History is important to determine the psychological component involved. Question regarding the frequency, intensity and duration of the habit. Then we have to inquire about the feeding patterns, parental care of the child, presence of other habits also evaluated. When diagnosis of digit habit also be obvious when child is actively performing the habit. Then extraoral examination. 
this uh, digit can be examined on examination we can find out written exceptionally clean chapter and with a short fingernail this a clean this happen this shape and thumb is a indication for the child is indulging in the habit also fibrous rough and callus may be present on the superior aspect of the finger this habit also causes a deformation of the finger the typical presentation of a finger of a thumb sucking child child then patient for analysis check for mandibular retrusion maxillary protrusion high mandibular plane angle and profile then when patient is uh, when uh, swallowing patient is observed for presence of a facial grimace or an excessive mentalis muscle contraction the facial profile of a thumb sucking child may be either a straight straight uh, profile or a convex profile then coming to intraoral examination tongue uh, should be examined for correct size and position of the tongue at rest tongue action during swallowing then dentoalveolar structures individuals with severe finger or thumb sucking habits were the digit apply, applied on anterior superior vector to the upper definition the uh, upper dentition and palate will have a flared and proclined maxillary anteriors with diastemas and retroclined mandibular anteriors is the typical intraoral feature of a thumb sucking child there is there, there is proclination of the upper anteriors and then there is a flaring of upper anteriors and midline diastema and a incompetent lip according to nanda the type of malocclusion produced by digit sucking is dependent on a number of variables that is position of the digit in associated orofacial uh, muscle contraction mandibular position during sucking facial skeletal pattern intensity frequency and duration of force applied now uh, we can see the clinical features associated with thumb sucking there may be maxillary anterior proclination and mandibular retroclination Anterior open bite. This type of malocclusion arises due to combination of factors. That is, the child is placed with the thumb uh, over the upper incisor region. So there will be a gap, and the posterior teeth are free to erupt. So because of this gap, posterior teeth uh, free to erupt and causing an anterior open bite. Symptom is congestion of maxillary artery because while traversing, the tongue is placed in a lower position inside the oral cavity, and there will be an unopposed action that is from cheek muscles and also buccinator. There will be severe uh, pressure occurring over the buccal uh, surface of the posterior teeth, causing uh, constriction of the maxillary arch. Now, posterior cross bite. This always due to the consequence of constriction of the maxillary arch. That's the unbalanced muscle forces on the maxilla, exerted by the cheek muscles, are unmet by the pressure from the lingual musculature, that is the tongue, which are normally present. While this result in a maxillary constriction, there is no restriction to the mandibular growth, eventually leading to a cross bite. We can summarize the effects of thumb sucking. Its effects on maxilla there will be proclination of the maxillary incisors, increased maxillary arch length, anterior placement of the apical base of the maxilla, increased clinical crown length of incisor, high parallel arch, etc. And on a in a lower incisor there will be retroclination and retrusion of the mandible. And effects on intraoral relationship there will be increased overjet, decreased overbite, posterior crossbite, and anterior open bite. And effect on lip lip placement and function that will be development of tongue thrust, lower tongue position, hypotonic upper lip, hyperactive lower lip.
now how we can be uh, prevent this uh, mainly uh, many approaches are there for the prevention of oral from second habit motive based approach the history atara history will help diagnose the etiology of the habit and child's engagement in various activities child practices the habit when bored and left to himself or it could be just before he goes to sleep so parents can be counseled on keeping the child engaged in various activities and distracting the child from uh, this habit and engaging in various other interesting activities when uh, the important of parents involved uh, involvement in the prevention when parents are at home they should be advised to spend ample time with the child so it, it will put away child's feeling of insecurity at night this can again be reinforced by playing soothing music or by telling good bedtime stories till the child falls asleep then duration of this feeding care should be taken when feeding in that duration of fat feeding should be adequate so as to enable the child to exhaust his certain urge and feel completely satisfied then mothers present an attention during bottle feeding in case of bottle fed child uh, they should be held by the mother and enough attention should be given in the process now uh, the treatment consideration psychological status of the child we have to find out the reason uh, behind why the child is indulging in this habit any psychological problem is there or uh, why uh, we have to take the proper history in order to find out the reason behind the habit if the oral habit was associated with an emotional problem this would suggest the need for a psychological consultation then motivation of the child to stop the habit it is also important to assess the maturity of the child in response to new situations and to observe child's reactions to any suggestion the treatment approach for the digit sucking habit should deal directly with the child first ingredient needed to stop the habit is the child's desire to stop the child himself have a desire to stop the parental concern regarding the habit If the parent is unable to cope with the situation positively, then both parent and child should be dealt with during treatment. Parent should become a silent partner, and child should not should not be embarrassed or criticized. Negative reinforcement in the form of threat, nagging, and ridicule would only entrench the habits. Now, treatment psychological therapy. Train the patient for underlying psychological disturbance. in if there is any psychological problem we should refer the child to a professional for counseling children between age of 4 and 8 years of age need, need only reassurance positive reinforcement and friendly reminders to develop sweeter hypothesis he states that the best way to break a habit is by its conscious purposeful repetition That is, the child should be asked to sit in front of a mirror and asked to suck his thumb, observing himself as he indulges in the habit. This procedure is very effective if the child is asked to do the same at a time when he is involved in an enjoyable activity. In reminder therapy, there are extraoral approaches and intraoral approaches. Emma. extraoral approaches there are uh, chemical treatment various uh, chemicals are available such as uh, hot tasting bitter flavored preparations or distasteful agents that are applied to finger or tongue for example pepper quinine asafoetida commercially available products are femite composed of denatonium benzoate the bitter compound which prevents children from sucking their digit on application is applied over the skin and nails and allowed to dry for 10 minutes a new coat should be applied morning and evening till the habit is broken the commercially available product for uh, travel approach the mind 
open thermoplastic compost was devised by Allen, where a thermoplastic material was placed on the offending digit. A total of six weeks of treatment time was required for elimination of hazard. Then AIDS band-aids approach. This uh, method is helpful in patients or in children who wish to discontinue their habit and have no psychological contraindication or candidates. It involves a nightly use of an elastic bandage wrapped across the elbow. The pressure exerted by the bandage removes the digit from the mouth as the child tries and falls asleep. The use of long sleeve knife is also a very effective therapy. And use of long sleeves in a nightgown prevent the child from practicing thumbs up in hand and eventually stop it from recurring. The intraoral approaches. Various orthodontic appliances are available. This removable appliance used may be palatal grip, rakes, palatal arch, liquid spurs, holly's retainer with and without spurs. Fixed appliances such as lingual tongue screen appear to be more effective in breaking this practice. If the child has made appreciable changes in habit by three months, appliance can be the uh, design of a removable or fixed palatal screen. A bridge which breaks the suction force of the digit of the anterior segment and remind the patient of his habit and make the habit a non pleasurable one. Now, or, uh, oral skin. Oral skin is a functional appliance introduced by Neville. It produces its effect by redirecting the pressure of the muscular and soft tissue curtain of the cheek and lips. It prevents child from placing the thumb or finger into the oral cavity during sleeping hours. Then hair rake. Mac advocated the use of dental appliances in children over three and a half years of age who are persistent thumb suckers. Bluegrass appliance developed by Bruce Haskell is a fixed appliance using a Teflon roller together with a positive reinforcement used to manage thumb sucking in children between 7 to 13 years of age. The uh, benefit of this appliance is that patient believes that he has acquired a new toy to play with. So uh, the child is instructed to use this roll, roller instead of sucking the digit and the uh, child is gradually uh, remove this habit. And quad helix. Quadrilic is a fixed appliance used to expand the constricted maxillary arch. The helices of the appliance serve to remind the child not to place the finger in the mouth. Mm, now, um, modified bluegrass appliance. This is a modification of the original appliance with the difference being that this has two rollers of different colors and material instead of one. The patient tries to suck on his thumb, the suction will not be created and the Thumb will slip from rollers, thus breaking the act. Now is the reason for the thumb phone concept. The reason for the a small bag is given to the child to tie around the wrist during sleep. And the child is explained that child as the child sleeps in his home, thumb also sleeps in its house. Now about thumb sucking book. The Little Bear Who Sucked His Thumb is a beautifully illustrated story book written by a dentist, Dr. Dragon Antilos. It's a story about a little bear Oliver that sucks his thumb, who with the help of a mystical dragon able to overcome his thumb sucking problem. This book approaches the issue in a fun and non-threatening way, providing subtle motivation and inspiration for children to stop the habit when they are ready. Now we are moving on to the specific habits. Specific have been used by mankind for more than thousands of years. These have been identified to help children in transitioning to sleep to soothe infants to provide comfort while sleeping. The dental changes created by specific habits are similar to 
some habits. Increased duration of pacifier habit is related to an increased prevalence of anterior open bite, reduced overbite, and posterior. The safety issues regarding the pacifier habit, physical safety, the material and design of pacifier that have been associated with aspasia infection and death. Chemical safety due to presence of uh, N-nitrosamine in pacifiers which are proven to be carcinogenic. Then immunological safety, latex allergy and early sensitization. In management, uh, educate the parent and caregivers about the safe use of pacifier. Withhold the use of pacifier until breastfeeding is established. After that point, limit their use for soothing breastfeed infants. Clean pacifier routinely and avoid sharing between siblings. Uh, and the parents also educate that pacifier should be uh, curtailed beginning at 2 years of age. So that's all about uh, consulting and pacifier habit. Now moving on to the next habit, tongue twisting. In embryologic life, developing tongue is considered disproportionately large in comparison to the developing mandible. That is, the tongue fills the embryonic nasal cavity. During the infantile swallow, a tongue is between gum pads and in close opposition with lips and its contraction of the facial muscle help to stabilize the mandible. Later half of the first year of life, Several maturational events occur that alter the functioning of the orofacial musculature. With the arrival of incisors, tongue assumes a retracted posture and initiates the learning of mastication. And as soon as bilateral posterior occlusion is established, true chewing motions are seen to start and the learning of mature sallow begins. Now we can see the definition of tongue. According to Google, the tongue thrust is the situation if the tongue is observed thrusting between the not close in general situation during the period. And according to Google, he states tongue thrust as the forward movement of the tongue between the teeth to meet the lower lip during deglutition and in sounds of speech so that the tongue becomes interdental. The classification of tongue thrusting, the psycho, uh, physiologic tongue thrusting and habitual tongue thrusting. Physiologic embraces the normal tongue thrust swallow of infancy. And habitual tongue thrust swallow is present as a habit even after the correction of the malocclusion. And functional tongue thrusting, when a tongue thrust mechanism is an adaptive behavior developed to achieve an oral seal, it can be grouped as functional. It's an anatomy. Persons having enlarged tongue can have an anterior tongue posture. Then, the James Brewer and Townsend classification of tongue thrusting. Type 1 non deforming tongue thrust, type 2 deforming anterior tongue thrust. And then, this again anterior open bite and associated recumbency of anterior teeth. And subgroup 3 associated posterior cross bite. Then, type 3 deforming lateral tongue thrust. In this, another 3 subgroups that is posterior open bite, posterior cross bite, deep over bite, then type 4 deforming anterior and lateral tongue thrust. That is anterior and posterior open bite, that is subgroup 1, then subgroup 2 associated procumbency of anterior teeth, then subgroup 3 associated posterior cross bite. According to Moyer, normal swallow, simple tongue thrust swallow, complex tongue thrust swallow, retained infantile swallow. Before going to the tongue thrusting habit, let's see what are the infantile swallowing pattern and what is the adult or mature swallowing pattern. During uh, all the infants thrust their tongue during swallowing, that is, tongue lies between the gum pad. It's a adaptive mechanism which helps the uh, child for suckling, helps in feeding also. The mandible is stabilized by contraction of facial muscles. It's seen during, uh, is usually seen in neonate and disappears with the eruption of teeth and growth of mandible. The infantile swallow is tongue is placed between the gum 
Lantang courses also long. Teachers of others swallow the pattern. As a person swallows, the pocketum combats the palatal rugae posterior to the maxillary anterior pit. And mid portion contacts the hard palate, and the posterior aspect assumes a 45 degree angulation against the posterior pharyngeal wall to permit the bolus of food to move into the digestive tract as an uh, adult swallowing pattern. Facial expression muscles are passive, but mandibular elevators are contracted, and there is no contraction of muscles of facial expression, including the lips and cheek. This is the feature of mature salad as a normal swallowing pattern. And the feature of swallow with simple tongue thrusting. Simple tongue thrusting is associated with teeth together swallow. And there will be associated contraction of lip, mandalis, and mandibular elevator. There will be well circumscribed anterior open bite. It's the adaptive mechanism that is, when a child wants to swallow, anterior open bite is sealed by the tongue to create a vacuum so as to complete the act of swallowing, resulting in anterior tongue thrusting. Swallow associated with complex tongue If the teeth apart swallow, there will be poor occlusal interdigitation with generalized anterior open bite. Combined lip, facial, and mandalis contraction is observed. There will be lack of contraction of mandibular elevators. Then tongue thrusting between the teeth. That is the feature of complex tongue thrusting teeth apart swallow. Now, the features of retained infantile swallow. This is due to undue persistence of the infantile swallow. Usually, a clue one, on, uh, one molar on each quadrant. Strong contraction of facial muscles during swallowing. Tongue protrudes markedly and is held between all the teeth during the initial stages of the swallow. And the face will be expressionless. Children restrict themselves to talk that. The rating infantile swallow is very difficult to teach. Now, uh, the etiology for tongue thrust. So, it's from infantile swallow. Tongue thrust is merely a retention of the infantile suckling mechanism. Uh, with the eruption of incisors at 6 months of age, tongue does not draw back as it should and continues to thrust forward. The continuation of infantile swallow. Such as no breathing, chronic tonsillitis, allergies, etc., promote a more forward tongue posture due to pain and decrease in the amount of space uh, which bring about tongue thrust swallow. And also to maintain a physiological need to maintain an adequate airway, tongue is uh, pushed forward. Now the Hereditary factor, that is the type of maxillary structure that favors the development of tongue as may be hereditary. For example, inherited hyperactivity of orbicularis oris with specific anatomic configuration and neuromuscular activity. The etiology is the tongue size. Tongue size as well as tongue function is an important consideration. Coming to diagnosis of tongue thrust, examination of the tongue with size, shape, and movement of the tongue. In functional examination, tongue position during rest. And observe the tongue during swallow. Patient is seated upright and little water is placed in the patient's mouth and patient is asked to swallow. During normal swallowing, mandible rises as teeth draw together and lips touch each other lightly, scarcely uh, contracting. And facial muscles, there, there will be no marked contraction. That is the new normal swallow. During abnormal swallowing, teeth will be apart. Lips are pursed tightly, and active contraction is seen, and contraction of muscles of facial expression. Then, next to the palpatory examination, place hand over temporalis muscle and ask the patient to swallow. During normal swallowing, temporalis muscle contract as the mandible is elevated. During teeth apart swallow, there will be no temporalis contraction. 
then fold the lower lip and ask the patient to swallow the water during normal swallowing patient able to swallow normally in case of tongue thrusting swallow will be inhibited strong mentalis and lip contraction are needed for mandibular stabilization the water will spill out of the mouth coming to the features clinical features of tongue thrusting the features depends on variables such as the intensity duration frequency and type of tongue thrust the extra oral finding lip posture lip separation is greater in the tongue thrust group and uh, this is consistent finding both at rest and in function tongue thrust children are more likely to have various speech disorders such as sibilin distortion lisping problems in articulation lisping there will be lisping and problems in articulations of certain sounds that is z v these sounds the uh, children cannot be pronounced clearly in facial form there will be increase in anterior facial height and what are the intraoral findings tongue movements that swallowing sleep and stuff seem to be jerky and inconsistent in the tongue thrust group chin point is found is found to be posterior in the tongue thrust group as compared to the normal position tongue posture the tongue tip at rest uh, is lower in the tongue thrust group this could be because of the anterior open by pressing and also because of the longer period of time required for the tongue tip to move from rest to second stage of swallowing the tongue group and malocclusion various malocclusions have been reported this can be uh, further divided into features pertaining to the maxilla there will be proclination of maxillary anterior resulting in an increase in overjet there will be generalized spacing between teeth then features uh, pertaining to the mandible retroclination or proclination of mandibular teeth depending on the type of tongue thrust present then intermaxillary relationship anterior or posterior open bite based on the posture of the tongue posterior teeth uh, posture of tongue posterior teeth cross bite etc and diagnosis this one is free to determine the swallow pattern of siblings and parents to check for hereditary etiological factor to determine whether uh, there is any remedial speech was ever provided information regarding upper respiratory infection sucking habits and neuromuscular problems finally the past and present information regarding the overall abilities interest and motivation of the patient should be noted examination the swallowing uh, habit should be detected and corrected early to facilitate normal development of the palate and dentition and study the posture of the tongue while the mandible is in postural position it can be done if lips rest up tongue posture it can also be noted in the lateral the phylogram of the mandibular posture then observe the tongue during various swallowing procedures thus the unconscious swallow command swallow saliva and the command swallow water and conscious swallow during chewing and also the complexity of tongue thrust should be observed whether it is a simple tongue thrust lateral tongue thrust or a complex tongue thrust found uh, in various types of tongue thrust that in simple tongue thrusting there will be normal tooth contact in posterior region but there will be anterior open bite the lateral tongue thrusting there will be posterior open bite with tongue thrusting laterally and observe the role of tongue during mastication and speech in case of complex tongue thrusting there will be generalized open bite the absence of contraction of lip muscles and teeth contact in occlusion so what are the treatment considerations usually tongue thrust self correct by 8 or 9 years of age the time of uh, complete correction of the permanent anterior teeth orthodontic correction is usually more successful if initiated during the early mixed dentition stage of dental development or that's between the ages of 9 to 11 the presence or absence of associated manifestations 
usually uh, treatment not uh, started or recommended if uh, trunk thrusting is present without malocclusion or any speech problem if there is uh, malocclusion but no speech problem orthodontic correction uh, usually eliminate the trunk thrust if there will be other habit such as thumb sucking uh, in, in such cases thumb sucking should be treated first what are the treatment options during the initial visit uh, we should explain to chart and pad what a thumb thrust valve and is carefully begins to establish a, a rapport to motivate the child to want to control his habit in the second appointment child is instructed the correct position of the stump for correct swallow clinician places the finger firmly on the patient's incisive papilla and teaches the child the same finger placement child is then instructed to hold an orthodontic elastic or a sugar free candy with tip of the stump on the incisive papilla the child is instructed to practice the thumb swallow pattern and eventually practice the posture lift training through a minimum of 20 to 25 appointments the placing of the elastic orthodontic elastic on the top for the um, for teaching the child to correct position of the top the training of correct swallow and posture of the top of the uh, orthodontic elastic and sugarless food drop exercise this can be held by tongue tip against the palate or the rugae area do is a pose for its exercise that is pop salivary squeeze the spot and swallow use the pressure point on the papilla to show where the spot is and tip is again the spot at rest position child then learns the two ways exercise that is spot and squeeze the method the child learns the correct pose or correct method of swallow other exercise child has to perform a series of exercises such as whistling reciting the count from 60 to 69 gargling yawning etc on the respective muscles then lip exercise sagopa and button pull exercises subconscious therapy once the voluntary swallowing point is acquired then patient is proceed to subconscious therapy the subliminal therapy patient has to place a reminder sign for auto suggestion which requires patient to give self instruction like repeat six times i will swallow correctly all night all night long for 10 nights now coming to mechanotherapy various appliances to re educate tongue so that dorsum of tongue approximate the palatal bowl and the focus on contact palatal rugae during deglutition using appliances as a guide in the correct positioning of tongue with the mechanical therapy both fixed and removable appliances can be practiced to raise strain and the tongue movement during swallowing with the objective of restraining the tongue to a more posterior secure position in the oral canal then should have sufficient acrylic liquid to the maxillary and ears to open the mouth in these by cases thus creating risk of retraction of the incisor Additional modifications include placing grip into the palatal acrylic to serve as a tongue restraint, or cutting a window through the acrylic liquid to the grip. This this helps to train the child in correct placement of his tongue posture after the appliance is removed. The loop on the fixed tongue grip are removed one by one as the patient weaned from the habit appliance over the six. The other various appliances include. in the sense that some just in habit moving on to mouth breathing habit the soundly defined mouth breathing has a habitual respiration through the mouth instead of nose is common among 5 to 15 years of age Now coming to the classification of mouth breathing habits. According to Pin, a mouth breather can be classified as anatomical or obstructive or habitual. 
Anatomical mouth breathing is due to a short upper lip and obstructive mouth breathing due to any obstruction in nasal passage or nas uh, nasal polyps or any uh, deviation in the nasal septum, etc. And habitual. Uh, once uh, the, uh, any obstruction in the nasal cavity is corrected, after that also the person or the child continues to breathe through the mouth. It is habitual mouth breathing. Any infection or any inflammation, that suggests chronic inflammation of nasal mucosa, allergic stomatitis, and atrophic rhinitis, enlarged adenoids, tonsils, nasal polyps, etc. Then genetic factor, the seeming ectomorphic change. Let's see the clinical features for mouth breathing. Will be adenoid phase, a long narrow phase, and the nose and nasal passage. The nose tip is superiorly, then flat nasal bridge, flaccid lips, short upper lip, then collapsed to buccal segment of maxilla, high palatal vault, then dolicofacial pattern, and expressionless face. Then what are the dental effects? There will, there will be protrusion with spacing of upper incisor, then decreased overbite, open bite, and there will be lower tongue position. And posterior frostbite, and also there will be increased overjet and constricted maxillary artery. And the lips, there will be incomplete upper lip or inverted heavy lower lips. Then uh, there will be gummy smile. Then external nares, uh, like there will be a slit like external nares with narrow nose and a jaundiced nasal mucosa. In gingiva, there will be uh, chronic keratinized marginal gingivitis, then uh, there will be classic rolled margin and enlarged inguinity papilla, heavy plaque deposition, salivary flow, and bacterial overgrowth. And pocket formation and interproximal bolus also uh, we can see in uh, mouth breathing patients. In other effects. There will be narrow maxillary sinus and nasal cavity, then swollen and engorged to the turbinates, atrophic nasal mucosa, the first speech there will be nasal tone, infection of lymphoid tissue, then otitis media, dull sense of smell, loss of taste, etc. Then how we can diagnose? First two uh, history, we can check the lip posture, then we can ask about the history of any tonsillitis or allergic rhinitis, otitis media, etc. Then coming to examination, observation of the breathing pattern, then lip posture, then ALR contraction, then nasal orifices. Then coming to mirror test, also known as folk test. We can use a two surfaced mirror. Uh, which is placed on the patient's upper lip. If air condenses on the upper side of the mirror, we can say that he is a nasal breather and if it's an opposite side, he is a mouth breather. Then the next test is maxillary water holding test. Patient is asked to hold mouthful of water. The mouth breathers cannot hold water for long time. Then Juman's butterfly test. Take a few fibers of cotton and place it just below the nasal op opening and exhalation. Cotton fluttered downward and he will be a nasal breather. If it's uh, going upward, then he will be a mouth breather. Then rhinometry. Total airflow through nose and mouth can be quantified. And we can see the treatment concentration. Can see the age of the patient, then ENT examination for evaluating any tonsillitis or any adenoids, etc. The ideal time is mix a deletion period. In symptomatic relief, uh, like uh, to prevent the gingivitis, we can give a gingival cortic. And for uh, plaque deposition and all, we can uh, give an aortic prophylaxis. Now, coming to the treatment for mouth. 
assessment elimination of force before going to the treatment of breathing uh, habit we can we have to see the nasal any obstruction or any tonsillitis or the underlying uh, systemic disease so uh, we have to find out and if, uh, we have to refer for an ENT consultation then coming to interception of habit like exercises like physical exercises like deep inhalation exercise can be performed then for lip upper lip extension exercise upper lower lip combined exercise to improve the tonicity of the lip then playing a windpipe then maxillothorax myotherapy that is oral spray is introduced by needle it's a solid acrylic shield which rests over the labial fold conforms to vestibule and there will be a frenum relief should be worn in day and entire night the modifications available for oral cream person the breathing holes given by cross the holes may be gradually reduced in size with acrylic as the patient becomes accustomed to the wearing of the acrylic other variation of cross is the combined oral and vestibular screen to make a double orifice for eliminating mouth breathing, tongue thrusting and dental protrusion. So that's all about mouth breathing habit. According to Ramford, bruxism can be defined as the habitual grinding of teeth when the individual is not chewing or swallowing. These are the other definitions for bruxism. Now coming to classification or its types. Daytime bruxism or diurnal bruxism. It's the conscious or subconscious grinding along with parafunctional habit. It is silent. The nighttime or nocturnal bruxism. That is subconscious grinding in rhythmic pattern of masseter. Now we can see what are the joyful symptoms before bruxism. may be due to reaction to an occlusal interruption or high respiration or any irritating dental condition or any CNS uh, defects like cortical lesion cerebral palsy or mental retardation systemic conditions like intestinal parasites yeah due to disturbances the nutrition deficiencies magnesium deficiency then enzymatic distress allergy any food allergy and endocrine disorders then psychological theory associated with feeling of anger aggregation or stress or emotional status another causes may be genetics or occupational factors such as enthusiastic student compulsive overachiever in competition sports etc Now, what are the indicators for bruxism? We can uh, see the presence of dental wear, accretion, then bruxo facet, or maybe grinding or clenching. In clinical manifestation: there is the occlusal trauma, there is mobility of tooth, then tooth structures, non-functional occlusal wear, there will be sensitivity to tooth, a typical shiny wear, facets with sharp edges, there may be palpal exposure. In a fracture of crown or restoration, and there will be muscular tenderness, like uh, pain in the region of temporalis, or lateral cervical masseter on palpation, then fatigue on wake, hypertrophy of masseter, and TMJ disturbances like repetition, clicking, restriction of mandibular movement, deviation of chin, and also dull pain. These are some of the clinical. And there will be also headache. And other signs and symptoms such as sound grinding and tapping sounds, then soft tissue trauma, then small ulceration or ridging on buccal mucosa opposite the molar teeth. Next, we can see the treatment options for this. That is psychotherapy. We have to uh, send the patient for a counseling and given a tension relief. And also habit awareness. an auto suggestion and hypnosis when patient becomes conscious of his nervous habit and understands possible consequences relaxing exercise and physiotherapy so to decrease muscle tension and bruxism and also exercise and massage can relieve then we can use the 
no alternative in the form of a single electricity in the system, not to buy all paper, the electricity in the complex electrodynamic simulation to consider an orthorhombic correction. We can uh, give an occlusal adjustment in case of any occlusal discrepancies. Then uh, gradually there will be disappearance of hab uh, habitual grinding. And we can uh, even go for a coronoplasty or high point correction. Then uh, we can opt for a occlusal sprints for nighttime wear. It is uh, made from vulcanite and uh, it's a part of splint to cover occlusal surfaces. It reduces the increased muscle tone and also TMJ appliances, the prefabricated intraoral appliances for TMJ disorders. So that's all about Raxism. We want to lip, lip hair. The normal lip anatomy and function are important for keeping, keeping and maintaining a balanced occlusion. The classification of uh, lip biting habit like lip licking or wetting lips by the tongue or the uh, lip sucking habit that pulling lips into mouth between teeth the etiology for lip biting any malocclusion or in conjunction with any other habit emotional stress now what are the clinical features there will be protrusion of upper incisors retrusion of lower incisors there will be lip trap increased overjet it and lip has reddened and sharp the area below the vermilion border and also there will be an accentuated mentolabial sulcus and how uh, we can manage the lip biting habit uh, first visual education we can uh, show uh, the patient's lips and we can uh, motivate the patient to stop the habit and also we can use lip bumper either a removable or fixed lip bumper we can uh, use so this uh, the acrylic portion of the lip, uh, lip bumper that hold the lips away from the teeth and a lip protector then we can also use oral screen that's all about lip biting Keeping or biting the cheek muscles in between the upper and lower posterior teeth. That's the cheek biting. The clinical features there will be ulcers at the level of occlusal line and there will be open bite in tooth malposition in buccal segment. The treatment vestibular swing removable crib. Then coming to the Nail biting uh, may be a sign of stressful condition. According to Vishal, 43% in adolescents and it is seen in 25% in college students. Physiology, any emotional problem, stressful condition, uh, psychosomatic successor of thumb sucking. And once the patient uh, stops thumb sucking habit, may be continuous uh, nail biting habit. Nail, there will be inflammation of nail beds and nail and irregular nail margins. Then the dental effects are crowding of teeth, rotated teeth, and accretion of incisal edges of incisors. Now coming to the management of nail biting habit. We can discuss with the child and the parent uh, to find out any reason behind the habit or any find out any uh, psychological uh, background. We should not nag and scold the child. She should encourage to do outdoor activities and distract from the habit. And you can even use a, use a nail polish or chemicals like quinine and phenamide. So that's all about nail biting habit. Now we want to self improve this habit. It's also known as masochistic or shadow masochistic or self mutilating habit. The patient enjoys inflicting a damage to himself. It's usually seen in mentally retarded child. So it's defined as a repetitive act that results in physical damage to the individual. Etiology uh, is associated with certain syndromes like Lesch-Nyhan syndrome, then D-Lang syndrome. And clinical features. 
healthy biting of fingers knees and shoulder tenum thrusting pricking of gingiva insertion of sharp objects into open now the management of self injurious habits the parents should not uh, take a harassing approach instead they should diagnose if there is any psychological uh, reason why the parent uh, child is indulging in harmless habit if we can find any such a reason we can refer the patient to a psychiatrist or a pediatrician and also we can take alternative therapy for healing ulcers like oral bandage and even oral screen now let us frame this the locking of label frame between teeth for several hours clinical features paste to maxillary incision the frame is pulled between teeth for several hours and treatment psychotherapy palliative treatment mechanotherapy like oral shield this body thing commonly seen in teenage boys they use their teeth for opening the body thing clinical feature will be notching of the incisors and partially denuded labial enamel treatment you use of raised trains so that's all about oral habits so it is important to identify the underlying reason for oral habit that's why the child is indulging in habit rather than directly proceeding for a mechanotherapy or such treatment and the more important is that we should uh, identify the habit as early as possible to minimize the potential deleterious effect on dentofacial complex thank you